Hey guys, it's Agonis Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so. But just click on the button below and hit subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to bring you another Magic Leap development video. In today's video, I'm really excited because I'm going to walk you through creating a planet scene that is going to basically simulate a space. So I'm going to keep it very simple where we're going to be grabbing a component that I created previously called grabables and selectable to basically select different planets and also see more information about planets on a little overlay that is going to display on each one of the planets. So let's jump into Unity and let's start working on it. All right guys, so what I'm going to do today is to create a basically like a space scene that we can go around, select planets, look at different information about planets and also hopefully place some of those planets in different areas. So. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some of the components that I created previously and I want to do this because I think a lot of the code that we have created together by the series of videos that I've done with Magic Leap, I think a lot of the examples that I have and the, a lot of the examples that Magic Leap has is going to provide you with basically a lot of power to create experiences. So what I want to do is I want to basically go into the asset store download some low poly planets and then we're going to be looking at some of those planets and how they behave in unity and also in the magic leap device so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to download a package and there's a lot of different packages for free in the asset store so all i did was search for planets and then i selected free assets and of course you can buy assets if you like to for this example i'm going to keep it basic and we're just going to use some of the planets that are available in the store so I've been looking at a couple of them and I think the one that I like this one as well the handmade stylized planet so I'm actually gonna go with this one and we're just gonna make up planets and make up names and basically give those planets some some kind of description so that when we're selecting some of those planets we can see you know what they are where they are located so I'm gonna go ahead and click it and open it up and yeah this one's actually really cool then just gonna click on download and it's going to take a little bit to download so while that is going i'm going to go ahead and create a new scene so in this scene i'm going to clone the one that we did for the particle system with ml special mapper because i also want to have a special mapper in this scene so i'm going to go ahead and clone that so i'm just going to go ahead and do command d to clone it and this one we can just say planets i think it's fine we can start with something as simple as you know placing the planets in the in the scene and then we can also go ahead and do a selectable object so that we can look at more information about them and then maybe when we're selecting the object we can rotate it and then look at more information about that object so i think we're going to start with that and then on the next video i might you know i might show you how to do an api call if we wanted to actually get real information about planets how we can get information about planets either from a from a web service or, or some kind of service that can give us that information. Okay, so now that we have that selected, I'm going to go ahead and inspect this scene. So it looks like we have the Earth, and I'm going to I'm going to leave it there just as a reference. And then the stars, we can keep the stars. I think those ones are really cool. And I think the audio was actually pretty cool as well. Water particles, we don't need the water particles. I was using that for collision with the ML special mapper. And, and to be honest, in this in this video, I don't need the special mapper. I thought I was going to need it, but I'll, I'll see if we'll need it on the next video. I was thinking of other ideas, but I don't think for this example that actually applies. So, okay, so we have a very simple scene with Earth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the instructions here. Just like I do in every video, I want to make sure that we have everything well explained. So this is going to be planets example and then particles will collide against a spatial mapping generated meshes so we can change that a little bit so we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to allow to selecting a planet and then looking at more information about planet which is going to be very very simple it's going to we're going to be using what i did on the grabables scene and then seeing how we how we can apply that to this scene so on this one what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to say planets will be shown and the user can select a planet 
where more information about a planet will be shown. Okay, and then we can drag those planets as well. Let's see, planets will be shown and the user can select. We can say select or drag or grab. We can say grab since I've been using that for other examples. Okay, and then, okay, and we can just move that down. All right, so I think, I think I'm happy with that. So the other thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and import the asset. So I'm just going to click on import and it's going to have a lot of assets for us and I, I really want to thank the creator of this asset. So let me, I'll get the company name so that you guys know who it is and we can give them the proper credit. So this is now import, importing and okay. So the company is one, one potato kingdom. So if you guys feel like you like this asset, which I really like it just by seeing it, make sure that you leave him a comment and say thank you for providing that asset, which is what I'm going to be doing as well. All right, so we have that and we can see the assets in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my scene view. And because I know that planet is positioned, which is the Earth, is positioned in the right place, I'm going to use that as a reference. So I'm going to go ahead and I haven't looked at these, to be honest, so I don't know what to expect. But Unity does a really good job of making sure that these assets are all correct. Okay, so it looks like looks like these assets are really cool. So let's go ahead and grab some of these planets. And I'm going to let me go ahead and go into top view. And we can go into orthographic view. And you can see that I I place those planets just way, way too far. And then I'll just go ahead and go into the Z axis and then do something like that. And I think for most of these planets, let's go ahead and size it appropriately, just like the Earth. We can just do 0 0.7, 2.7, 0 0.7, and 0 0.7. And let's actually do a smaller. Let's do 0.5. Let's do that one more time. So we're going to do that on X, Y, and Z. All right, so I like the size. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into perspective. And OK, so I think, I think that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and place a couple of these around and we can say this is going to be, and I'm not really good at coming up with names, so I'm just going to say this is planet one. And I think that that works for what we need. And then we don't need the earth anymore, so I'm just going to get rid of the earth. We can also, let me make sure that these, okay, so those are good. And then let's do that one as well. I'm going to place it right next to it. This one is going to be planet two. And then what I'll do, I'll just copy the transform so that we know that we can use that as a reference and then we'll just move it aside. Okay, so I think, I think that works. And then I think these ones are great. Let's go ahead and look at some different colors. So I want to give it a different, kind of like different look. Okay, and then place that. And then some of these ones can be different sizes. So we can do on this one is going to be 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Just want to give it a more of a look, of a real look. We can, and we can also change the Y axis because not all planets are on the same position. And I think something like that. And in fact, let's go ahead and make this one 0 0.55, 0 0.55, 0 0.55. I want them to look different. I don't want them to be the same. Then I'll do the same thing with this other one. I'll just go ahead and let me copy the transforms of planet one. And then go into this new one that we added, which is Desert Design 2 paste component values and in fact we can probably just move I want to be close to some of the planets because I want to be able to select some of those planets so I don't want to place them that far that it's impossible for me to to grab them I think I think something like that works and okay and then let me make this 1.4 on X Y and Z let's do that right there okay so I think I'm good with that the let's see let me let me add a couple more just i think we get we gotta give this more life and okay so this one looks cool I can grab that one and i'm going to go ahead and copy the transforms and this is going to be a little bit of time for me to get everything right but hanging there it's going to be cool when we run it on the device all right so this one looks really cool so i'm going to make this one bigger i'm going to make it 0.7 0.7 and 0.7 all right and I think something like that works 
and then I'll grab, let's see if we can grab maybe two more and then we'll wrap it up as far as the design. Okay, and then we just go ahead and, okay, looks like we didn't, doesn't save the values, I think if I do too many, too many different steps. So let's go ahead and paste the values again and then we'll put this one on the back. We can probably just do maybe a tiny one and something like that so that one is really really far so that's why it's so tiny and okay i think i'm i think i'm good i'm just gonna move them inside here and then we're just gonna name them so it's gonna say planet underscore and then i can go in and fill in the numbers i like to have things that are sequential and i don't know i think i'm, I'm always in the habit of making sure things look great even even as something as simple as a name so okay so i think that looks good so the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to add some kind of rotation to these planets. And we can just add a simple rotation script. I don't know if I have it in this one. I normally put it in. OK, so we don't have it. So it's OK. We'll go ahead and create, a, and create a new one. And yeah, I don't think I have a rotator. So we'll just create a new folder. And I normally call this folder transitions. And then this one is going to be rotation. Let's create 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 a new script, rotator, rotator. I can't remember how many times I have created this. I think it's been just way too many. But it's a, it, it's a very simple script. Let me go ahead and click on Assets, Open C Sharp Project. And OK, perfect. And then let me go ahead and find that script. It's going to be under Transitions, Rotator. And then normally what I do with an object like this, I say this is going to be a serializable field. It's going to be private. Vector 3, this is going to be the, ro the rotation speed that we're going to assign. So it's going to be, and the reason why I do it at Vector 3 is because I want to rotate differently on certain assets. So some of them might, might be on X, some of them might be on Y, some of them might be on Z, or some of them might be a combination of the three. Okay, so we can just say rotation speed, and then to be, just to start, we're going to start with a rotation speed of 1, 1, 1. I think that, that works. All right, or we can just say, I think thinking about it, let's just do vector zero. So no rotation speed whatsoever. And then what I'll do here is I'll remove some of these comments. And then normally what I do with something like this, I say rot transform and then rotate. And we can just rotate, we can either rotate around or rotate around local, or just do a simple rotate. I'm just gonna do, let's try the rotate around or simply, let me see which one is the one that I normally use. And OK, the normal, the one that I normally use is this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, so I want to rotate on a speed. So I'm going to grab the rotation speed and then multiply it by time, that delta time. And then what I'm going to do here on the space, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and rotate on self. I think that, I think that works. And because this is so simple, I'm just going to do a lambda here. Okay, and we don't need any of these using statements. And I think that I think all that works. Let's go back into. Oh, let's go ahead and do. No, that's fine. Let's go back. I was gonna say let's add a slider, but this is a vector three. We can't really add a slider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's go ahead and select one just to make sure that we get one correct, and then we can do the same thing on all the other ones. Okay, so it looks like these have a lot of materials. And okay, so let's go ahead and grab our rotator. And we're going to basically change a couple of these things. So this has, I wonder if this is the one from Magic Leap. Oh, I see. They're, they're using, looks like the asset itself had a rotator component. They had a speed, randomization, mesh object. And you know what? Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see how, I didn't, I didn't even know they had that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to grab this mesh. And I'm gonna completely guess, I don't know what how this works. And then the rotation speed, let's go ahead and do one. And rotation on, let's go ahead and rotate on Y, which is gonna be this value. Let's go ahead and do 20. And let's see what we get. If that works, we'll just use their asset. And let me increment the speed. And it looks like they have Maximum speed, minimum. Let me go ahead and increment this. And 
Okay, so I think what they have is great. I don't think we need to we need to use something else, but the reason why I'm gonna use something else is because this asset is not going to be I don't I don't want to rely on this asset. I want you guys to rely on the one that I created because that's the one that we're gonna use for most examples. So this one I'm just gonna remove, but that's cool that it, they have something similar to what we created. I'm just gonna say rotator. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate on the Let's go ahead and do 20 on Y and see what we get. We can do something as simple as that. Yep. And we're rotating on Y. We can we can go ahead and do something similar with the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and add it to all the other planets. We're just going to add our rotator. And then we can just say 40. And I'm just going to randomly, randomly change this value. So this one is going to be 60. This one is going to be 10. And then maybe I'll give it a little bit of a rotation on, on the X value, a little rotation on Z. And let me just go ahead and just make few few changes on some of these ones. Maybe this one is a negative value. And I'm not an astronomer, so if I made a mistake on some of these rotations, I apologize about that and I just want to create something that looks similar to a space which might not be even close but I think I think we'll get an idea of what we're trying to do and then this other one we can just do negative maybe negative 2 there negative 10 there and we can hit play and see what we get and we can go ahead and and, and I think that looks really cool even though we just made a few changes so I think I'm happy with with something like that okay so let's go ahead and, and focus on a couple of more things so the other things that I want to focus on is how we can make these components not only selectable but also grabbable so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into another scene and we're gonna go into the grabbable scenes and you probably know that I work on this scene quite a bit and this one shows you all the different types of grabbed objects that we can use and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't remember exactly all the implementations, so we're going to be copying some of these components so that we can we can change them. So let's go ahead and for this video, let's keep it simple. I'm going to do just a selection. And then once we have something selected, we can show a text over it. And then on the next video, I can make those planets grabbable so that we can move them around. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's keep it simple. And let's go into planets. And I'm gonna go into my components here. And then this is the component that, I, that I'm that i using for the other scene. So I know that I'm gonna need that. Let me go back into grabbables. We're also gonna need a controller. And I have a controller debugger on this one. And let me make sure everything, everything works. So I'm gonna need the controller debugger there. And I'm also going to need this controller left. So let's go into our planets. And yes, I want to save the scene, that's okay. And then I'm going to go into my content. And there we go. So the reason why I'm bringing the debugger is because I want to know when we're selecting different things. And I want to make sure that everything works. So, all right, so we're starting we're starting there. And I think some of the planets are just too far and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to get to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this closer to me. Because keep in mind that this is where the camera starts. And then we can keep him close, and and then in other videos, if we need to make him, you know, for make him be further away from us, then we can do that. Just gonna make him for testing. I think that works. Okay, so I think that's great. Let's me move this one. Something like that works. All right, and then so this one we we know it's going to be our controller. Let me make it zero zero zero. That's where that's gonna start. And then let me check a couple of more things. So the canvas normally should start from 000. And it looks like we have a little bit of an offset there. Okay, so I think everything everything works. This is actually gonna move forward because of some of the settings that I have on the head pose. Okay, so we have our controller there, which starts at 000. We also have a component here that I'm gonna move down. So let me move that one down and closer to the control so that I can check to make sure that that part still works. Okay, so I think something like that works. 
And this one is kinematic, so we can just keep a kinematic. And this is just a selectable object, so we don't need to worry about the not having not having a basically a, a ground where this is gonna fall to. Okay, let me just make sure everything else looks good. There, there is a sphere collider on the controller. The reason why I need that is because we need to know when we're colliding with the other object. And then the selectable cube also has a box collider and then a rigid body. Okay, so I think, let me test this piece and then if that works, we'll start with the configuration of the planets. Okay, so that works. And then let me go ahead and grab my controller here. And this one is the real controller, so we don't wanna change that one. We wanna change this one. So let me go ahead and set that one as 000. zero, zero. All right, so this one is gonna be our debugger. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play one more time. We're gonna go ahead and hit scene. And then we can see that that part is working fine. So I want to have the similar a similar setup on that, on these other ones, except I don't know that I wanna change the, the color, but I do wanna change the text. So when we're hovering over them, I wanna see what the planet name is. And also I want to have some sort of indicator that give us that information. So if we look at the structure of this, this has a selectable state. And then inside we have, so I'm gonna basically copy most of these components. So we're just gonna do, let's go ahead and select, do that on this planet. The reason why I wanna do that on this planet is because this planet is, ne is next to us. So let's go ahead and start with that one. Okay, so if we look at some of these components, this has a box collider. We can use a sphere collider on this one. I don't think that's an issue. So I'm going to say a sphere collider, and then it's going to have a sphere collider. And then if we look at the this component here, I think everything else is, is fine. Then on the rigid body, I'm going to say copy rigid body. And we can go ahead and go into planet 5 and then paid rigid body. And I don't think there's really much changes in here other than one of them has its kinematic enabled and then also use gravity. So for the most part, this is just the default settings. If we go back into here, the other component that I wanna add is gonna be the selectable. But before I do that, I need to com I need to copy this. So I'm gonna make these ones prefabs later on. So for now, let me go ahead and I'm gonna unpack them all. Okay, and, and then we can make them prefab later. So this selectable state, let's go ahead and grab it. And let me make sure, okay, this, everything here is zero except for Y. And that's fine, we can do zero, 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 and then we can just arrange it here. And something like that works. So on this one, let's keep it simple. We're just gonna show the state. And then maybe in the next video, I'll start adding more realistic information about planets. We can say that this is Jupiter, and then the distance is so many million light years, and then we we can just you know play around with that. I think I think it'll be fun. Okay, so I think I have that. I have. Let me make sure. Okay, so I have. That's all I need there. And then on the cube, I have a selectable. So I'm probably low some of the mappings on here. So if we go, oh, okay, I haven't added that component. So we need a selectable script. So let's go ahead and add it to Planet Five. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I think everything else should automatically, okay, so this is mapped to the wrong object. So let me make sure that I map this to the right object. Otherwise it's gonna change the wrong label. And then I think these ones are fine. I don't know how, how it's going to behave. So, okay, so we can, on this one we can say selectable state. We can just say planet, planet select select state, I think that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And then we can go ahead and go into scene view. I'm going to select my control debugger and then that's working, that's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that on every single one of the planets. So it shouldn't take that long. So I'm gonna remove, I don't need the selectable, this was just for reference. I think we can get rid of that. And then on these planets, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let me, okay, let me just resize everything. So we did it on planet five. So we need to do everything that we just did on every other planet. So we know that we're gonna need colliders. So I can just select the, all the other planets and then just, just add a sphere colliders to every single one of them. All right, and then I know I'm going to need, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need rigid bodies as well. 
So I'm just going to say copy components and I'm going to select all the ones except five. And right click and then paste component as new. Everything there should be fine. And let's, let's look at the last component, which is going to be the selectable component. So I'm going to need to do, let's go ahead and do it right now. That's fine. Even though we're going to need the child. And then I'm going to right click on it and then paste component as new. And it's going to have some missing references. Actually, it didn't, it didn't because it's still pointing to the wrong one. Okay, so that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paste that. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to do one more. We'll clean it up here in just a bit. And then the last one is going to be that. Let me just rename these two. Okay, and then what I'll do is on Planet 5, I know the settings about, you know, the positioning on Planet 5, so I'm going to copy that. And the reason I'm going to copy that is because I'm going to paste the values. And I'm going to say paste component values. Now if we go to each planet, you're going to see that each planet has its own, its own overlay and everything looks correct. And even this one that is smaller, it has a smaller overlay. So awesome. So that's all working fine. So now what we're going to need to do is we need to associate each one of these to the correct components. So I need to do that on this one. I need to do that one on this one. Let's do that one on planet three and then planet four. And the last one is going to be planet six because I already did planet five. Okay. And, and let's go ahead and change a couple of things in here. So on this one, I'm going to say planet one because I want to see something different. Okay. So planet one and then this one is going to be planet two. This one is going to be I like diversity and if we see things that are the same, it's they're just boring. So I like when I see things that are changing. And we can say we also need to do the same thing on this one. Because this one didn't have the proper name. And the last one is gonna be planet, let's see, planet six. Okay, so I think that should work and take us where we where we can select each one of those planets. Let's go ahead and hit play. And I'm going to go into my scene view and I'm going to grab my control controller debugger and we can see if everything is working. And this one is not working because I haven't been able to select it. Let me, there we go. So that one's working. So we have a little issue and that issue is that the overlay is rotating with the other component and, and we can fix that here in a minute. So, but I want to make sure that everything that I'm touching is selected. Okay. So that looks good and then on this one so i think for now if we add the rotation let's see i want to make sure so i'm rotating the entire planet and we could still rotate it so let me let me go ahead and fix it so i was going to say let's not fix it now but we can fix it easily so i'm just going to create a new game object and i'm going to say this is going to be planet one and then we'll just have to re readjust a couple of things here this one's going to be the planet. And then I'm just going to add the select state to be outside. And then that should fix that. Then we'll do, let me see. We'll do which one was, I think it was this one that was rotating in multiple axes. And yeah, this one was, so let's fix four as well. So that we can see what's happening with four. Uh, and let me go ahead and collapse everything. Okay, I'm going to add it to four. This one is going to be planet four and then what I'll do is so the other thing that I didn't do let me make sure that one is correct and let me see four what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the position of this to match the actually the position of the of the new game object to match the position of the other object before I do what I did okay and then we'll just drag it and drop it here and then I'll move this one up and then bottom and then I'll just do, so this should just work if, if the, because of pairing and child relationship, if we go back to, so you can see that that one, that one is staying in place. Let me make sure that the selecting of the object, it's working. I don't see why it shouldn't work, but it's always good to test. Yep. And that's working. So let's go ahead and do that on every single one of the other ones. Okay. So planet one, we know that that one, it's working fine. We did planet four. Let's go ahead and do planet two, three, and then the rest of them. So I'm just going to do 
planet 2. So it's going to put that one here, and I'll just duplicate this. This one is going to be for planet 3. And then we'll just put it right beneath here. Okay, and I'm just going to copy the transform and then paste it on this transform so that we are positioned at the right place. And then I'll just move, move it inside and then move it out and then move it down. Okay, and just so you know, guys, I'm going to be adding this to get GitHub. So if I'm going too fast, you know, don't worry about it because I'm going to, you're going to be able to look at this on your own time. Okay, so now on, play, on planet three, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to copy this transform, paste it on our new game object so that it has the same position. I'm going to drag and drop it. I'm going to move it up, move it down, and then rename it so that it's clean. Okay, so we did four already because it has that structure. We did that, that, and just checking everything to make sure that everything is clean. And then now we need to do five and six. I'm just going to add two more game objects. One is going to be for that one. And then let's collapse this. And then this one's going to be for six. Okay, so this one's going to be five. And I'm going to copy the transforms of the other object. Paste it on this one. And then what I'll do, I'll just move it inside. And then do what we just did previously. And then rename this guy to be planet. And then lastly, planet six. I'm gonna copy the transform of this one and then paste it on this one. All right, and then let's just drag it and drop it. And I think we should be done after I make one more change. Awesome, and I think that should cover all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and test it before we run it on, my, on the magic leap. Okay, and then I'll just go here. And then we'll go ahead and grab the debugger. And let me make sure that I'm, so we know that we're selecting that one just fine. We're selecting that one. I'm just going to do them all. Selecting that. And I think I'm too far from this one. Selecting that one. That's actually really cool how the yellow color affects that material. And then we'll do that one on this one. So we're selecting. And then I'll grab the one on the very back. Let me see if I can, if I can chase it. And let's go closer. And I just want to make sure this one is selectable, even though we might not even. Yep, and that one it's working. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you on this demo. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you how it looks on the Magic Leap device. So let me go ahead and go into. I just did build settings and then add open scenes, which is going to be called planets. So it's going to build it and run it, and then we'll see how it looks on the device. Let me hit save here and give it a second or two until it starts building. All right, guys, so I'll show you as soon as I have it running on the device. All right, guys, so I got the application actually running on the device. So let me show you. The volume is a little bit high, but I want to show you how it sounds. So I'm going to hit play. So I'm just going to explain it to you as, I, as I'm looking around. So I have most of the planets showing up and the, the head canvas is like on the way, but I'll fix that in the next version. But I can now select the planets. You can see how they're turning yellow. I can also do that one on this one, which is actually huge. It was right on above me. And also the stage changing there. And then I can also do that on the pink one. And then if I keep going, I'll just fast forward it so I can show you. I'm basically behind some of the planets. And there we have it. We can also look at how that one looks. So let me show you also another video. So the selectable items is all working fine. And then this other video, I recorded it because I wanted to see how it would look from, from above. Let me just mute it. And then here I am on the stairs in my house and I can look at everything right above it and everything looks looks really good. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in petro.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.